live to tape. It's recorded and they put it out as is. So, so you, you make it to the, you got your microphone as well, right? So you make it to the UFC. Obviously, that's a dream for everybody. It doesn't necessarily go the way that you're hoping for. I guess what's, uh, what's the initial reaction to that and the, and the way you kind of process it? Um, that's not how I process it at all. Make sure you speak in the microphone because you hit. Yeah, that's not how I uh, process that. Yeah, I had made it through the contender series. They didn't fight until 11 months later. And um, I seen the fight fall through at a heavier weight class, and I asked my manager about it. Um, so um, I wouldn't say, obviously I didn't win, but um, I wouldn't say that I was disappointed or it didn't go um, how I would have liked it. I mean, the fight was still a good fight. I came in, um, odds were against me, short notice and elevation. The worst part about that fight was the elevation. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I've learned from that. You know, I moved to Vegas in October, so I won't have to deal with the al altitude sickness that I went through for a week. So it's awesome that you take the positives out of it. I mean, do, were you able to do that, like, immediately? Because that's a mature way to look at it. Were you able to do that immediately? Did it take a little while to say, like, hold on, there's some things we can build on here? Yeah, the, um, the fact that I took that fight without really thinking that the altitude wasn't going to uh, bother me was, like, um, I wouldn't say an amateur mindset, but it was immature. And um, but I mean that's how that's how things as I'm because I'm going to be 30, so like I'm starting to run into realities now. You know what I mean? That's I can't keep doing the same thing I was doing at 22, 2019. You know what I mean? Now I'm getting older and realizing that sh shit is real out here. You feel me? For sure. Is it, and is that what necessitated the move to Vegas? Was that we said, like, hey, the, and, and I guess what's the biggest change has been since you made that move? Um, yeah. So the biggest change is just consistency. You know what I mean? Um, I moved, Like I said, I moved because of the altitude. But every time I came to Vegas for, I would come for a week, 10 days, the whole time I was fucking fighting the altitude. And it was just, like, almost pointless. You know, you come learn some things, but you can't really um, apply yourself because of the conditions. So, um, yeah, that's why I moved here. So I won't have to go to the now I'm consistent. Now I'm consistent, and I don't get tired. I can go 50 rounds. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I'm, I'm very um, content with the move. Uh, only thing is, it's been a long camp. Just ready to get in there, fast forward it. Let's get to it. I love it. Uh, there were some reports of you fighting in November. Was that ever supposed to happen, or was that erroneous, or what happened there? To be honest, it was my fault. I jumped the gun. Um, I apologized to Otman online. Um, he's a good guy. Um, I, was, I, I was in belief that we were going to be fighting. The contract was already signed in my head because I had just took a short notice fight, and, and Obviously, you didn't. You don't need to go about that the same way. And then my contender series fight was already locked in. So in my head, I was like, "Oh, this is locked in." I, I just jumped the gun. I posted it, and I blew that fight for myself. So like, there's nobody to blame but me. Um, yeah. So now I've learned my lesson. Like even when I got offered Michael Johnson, I had guys and message um, bloggers messaging me, "Hey, do you want me to post it?" And I hadn't told anybody. I'm like, "Dude, I don't even know what you're talking about." <laughs> Because, you know what I mean, at this point, they were just sabotaging, trying to sabotage. Nice. So what did you think when they brought Michael Johnson? Like, you're about ready to make your second walk, and he's making his 28th UFC walk. So what did you think of that as an opponent? Initially, like, I, I, I know of Michael Johnson. We've uh, hung out, I believe, like twice. One time in Arizona after my fight. Um, he's called my phone numerous times, you know, like, just for fight business because I was promoting shows and – uh, vice versa, and I'll call his phone to see, like, hey, do you have anybody, you know. Um, and, like, we just kept contact over the years. I even asked him to fucking say, um, like, five, six years ago, yo, could you um, say something to Shelby for me? You know what I mean? He's like, bro, I got you. I see Shelby. I, you know, and then he goes and blocks me, you know, on Facebook. <laughs> I like, like, we were cool. We had no problems. Like, obviously, I looked up to the guy. Been talking to him since like beginning of my pro career, you know what I said, you know what I'm saying, and uh, we were everything was fine. Then I fucking went to his page once he posted. He's like, oh, somebody said yes, as if I was supposed to say no. In my head, he's making his 28th walk. I'm making my second. I would think he would have a better relationship than somebody else. He's fought, you know what I mean? Like he's fought somebody with a better. Like we didn't have a real relationship. We just cordial and knew each other and respectful. I wouldn't say friends, you know, but I had three different tickets booked to go to Killcliff. 
um, back when it was freaking um, hard knocks. I was going to go train with him and Jason, and you know what I mean? Like, we were cordial, and then you get to fight, and you feel some type of way, so it's, it is what it is. Like, it's, it's it's just business for me, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not trying to bring the drama into it. I'm just telling it like it is. Like, he's a cool guy. He just blocked me for no reason. It's weird. <laughs> he said it's all business, but did it make you feel some kind of way as well? Well, it's just like you don't go back from there. You know what I mean? It's not like after the fight you're going to unblock me and we're cool again. Like, <laughs> no, we're not cool anymore, bro. Like, it's fuck you now, like, at the end of the day. So, you know what I mean? I like it. I like it. Uh, how about for you, D this fight week? Different feel? I mean, uh, second time around, more comfortable? I, I don't know. How does this compare to last time? It's totally different. Um, if we're being completely honest, I've only cut weight less than a handful of times out of every fight that I've had. So people look at my record, and they'll be like, oh, he's 12 and 6. I was fighting fucking golly green giants <laughs> my whole career. You know what I mean? And I don't think people realize how hard it is to win fights at, at that level with those guys that's that much bigger to you, bigger than you, and how hard it is not to lose to these big ass motherfuckers. You know what I mean? So now I'm finally cutting weight. I'm, I mean, cutting. It's not. I wouldn't even consider this a weight cut. This, if this was a weight cut, I should have been doing this shit. You know what I mean? Like it's everything's going perfectly. I'm not gonna tell you my weight, but I'm right on weight. If I miss weight. I'm a fucking idiot, which I'm not. So, you know what I mean? There's no way I'm going to miss Wade. And I was just watching some of the predictions, like, oh, even watching his interview, oh, he's coming down from three-way classes, so that's going to be a, a big deal. Yeah, it is for you. Not for me, buddy, because I'm fine. Like I told you, I train fucking every day, all day. You know what I mean? But, like, I'm not here to talk shit. Uh, like I said, I like Michael Johnson, still don't have a problem with him. Um... I'm just ready, man. It's been a long camp. I'm ready to go out there and get this fight over with, you know, move on to my next fight, um, which I heard I'll be, I'm going to be fighting Patty Piblet next. So that's what it is. If I win this fight, somebody promised me a Patty Piblet fight, or at least they're going to give my name to him. I, like I, it. I could be bullshitting, but <laughs> this will help me get a fight with Patty. <laughs> Might as well throw it out there. Might as well. Yeah, yeah. I like Patty, though. Patty's a cool guy. Until he blocks you. Huh? Until he blocks you, and then it's on. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he, he he's going to block me how he goes on about Tony Ferguson blocking him. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Last week for me, uh, mature approach to your first setback, right? But what would it mean to get that first win? I imagine it's a, a moment that you've envisioned for a long time. Yeah, man. Um, I just don't even – I can't explain it to you, man. Like, like um, I can just tell you this. Four months ago, I moved into um, – a studio apartment house, and it's it's the smallest fucking place I've ever, it's like a, smaller than a jail cell. So four months every day, I haven't been home, I t still talk to my family, but I've been in these fucking, what, 15 by 10 walls every day just to get my UFC win by myself. So that tells you how much it means to me. It means everything. I've already spent um, a third of the year, you know, just training for this. Um, to get my win, you know what I mean? So that's that's how much it means to me. My man, thanks for taking the time and salute to that hard work. Would anybody even Thank call? Thank you. Yes, sir. Would, would we even call this home field advantage, just the way the setup is? At least it is your Yeah, Yeah, like since I've been here, everybody in Vegas has accepted me. They they um, they love me. I feel like this is home, which I, I never get to have home field advantage, you know what I mean? I've always been the guy that goes and upsets people. But yeah, every everybody that I've met, you know, here in Vegas, you know, um, just good people, just like this young lady, uh, Elise, I just met, such a good vibe. Everybody in Vegas is just such sweethearts. And um, they, I feel like I'm welcomed here. So I, I do feel like this is um, gonna be like a, vibe, a home field vibe. I, everybody here is rooting for me for sure. That's what's up, man. And, um not necessarily any kind of home feel vibe, but how crazy is it? Does, and thank you for sharing that story about Michael Johnson. That your friends, heroes, rivals are not your, you know, like somebody you're in the cage with. Is that how do you separate that when you get, when you lock in there with them? Yeah, I'm not like that. Um, I don't have like um, I have idols, but it's very rare. Like DC was probably one of my only fighters that I really liked, and obviously he's not my weight class, and he's been done fighting. 
but I, I I don't really get that. Like I seen Chuck Liddell, it's like oh fuck Chuck Liddell, but um, yeah I don't get that. What a lot of people get like from 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 every stage. Like I'm just not a fan. More so as I I would be a friend of them. Yeah, I don't approach shit looking at people like, and you know and that's probably why I made it here because I just feel I feel equal to everybody. You know what I mean? Like whether you're a champion, whether you whatever the case. I just don't, I, I'm not a starstruck person, so it's just like, really doesn't make any difference. You know, I'm fighting MJ, Michael Johnson, and it doesn't feel, it just feels like I'm fighting somebody, bro, like. Awesome. Um, you mentioned something real important about these realities that coming into your 30s. What's something that you could share, the difference when you were 22 and just like a cold shower, you're good, and now as a, as a 30 year old, what's different, what's changed? Yeah, fuck, dude. Um, you just just injuries. You realize they never went away. That you thought was like, oh, I got better. No, you never get better. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. Like the older you get, the more you start to feel shit. That's what I'm saying, pretty much. You know. So. And now I'm sure you've been able to apply that to the training regimen, the weight cuts. You know, uh, training smarter, not not right, harder. Right. Well, um, shit, I've been doing this for almost 10 years, and I've been doing it the same way for nine of them. So um, I, I would like to thank the PI, um, Don Kelly, my nutritionist, Charles, head nutritionist, um, Alex, uh, my um, strength and conditioning coach, Gavin, um, Sarah, all of the Sarahs, Lynn, everybody at the PI, that has helped transition me to a more efficient athlete. I would like to thank them because it wasn't me that um, you don't just learn how to fucking do these things that you never seen before. You know what I mean? So um, for the last, like I said, four months, they've taken me under their wing. They've helped me out a lot. I'm, I may be missing somebody. Uh, Marcel, he's taken me under his wing and he's helped me out a lot. Even the security people. Um, everybody at the PI, man, has you know, helped me out a lot. And they're the reason that I'm gonna go out there and get the job done. They're the reason that my training is more efficient. Uh, I would like to thank my coach, Johnny Martin, as well as um, John Wood and Syndicate for taking me under his wing for this camp and, and helping me be more efficient. My coach, Roberto Ramirez. Um, other than that, I would just like to thank um, training partners, you know, everybody that I've trained with. Um, I'm not gonna name drop. But training with some pretty good guys. That's awesome, man. And last for me, you talked about getting the job done. How are you going to get this job done on Saturday? What can we expect from Flowers? Yeah, you could just expect me to win, bro. Win every second, win every moment, 15 minutes, one minute, whatever it is. It's, I'm going to win the whole time. Like, everybody's talking about how tough this fight's going to be. We'll see. Yes, sir. Thank you for that, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, guys.